The Theater That Was Built For Marion Davies Picture Play Magazine, June 1924 When Joseph Urban was commissioned by William Randolph Hearst to reconstruct and decorate the old Park Theater in Columbus Circle, now the Cosmopolitan, few realized the sentiment and significance of the artist's task. Ten years before, the same theater had been the scene of his first adventure as a scenic artist in this country, when he was brought from his native Vienna to design the settings for a play that failed, Edward Sheldon's fantastic and poetic Garden of Paradise. Urban's resources were swept away to a large extent by this fiasco, and the war cut him off from revenue from property in Austria. It became necessary for him to establish himself and his art in America. This he did, first with the Boston Opera Company and then in New York with the Metropolitan and the Ziegfeld Follies for a number of seasons. The prominence resulting from this work led to the inclusion of the screen in his endeavors. He was engaged to design settings for cosmopolitan pictures. All the Marion Davies productions have been made beautiful and impressive by reason of Urban's individuality of line and color but it was not until the Cosmopolitan Theatre was planned that he had the opportunity to express himself as an architect here. Although abroad, his villas and palaces and public buildings are numerous. Consequently, he brought to this work unusual zest. Nor did he forget the contrast and conditions brought about by time and money. Now it was carte blanche to go ahead and create the most beautiful and comfortable theatre, with no fear of financial setback or collapse and Urban did produce a theater unlike any other in America for little old New York. First, he devised a new style of semicircular stage in which the colonial influence is blent with more modern touches of contrast and design. White and gold, of course, carry out the design, heightened by the dull colors on the floral panels painted on black, which form folding doors. Opening, they disclose the screen on which the picture is projected. Four portraits of Marion Davies as Patricia O'Day, painted by Nicole Schottenstein, are displayed in subdued light, and fine old bronzes add to the simple dignity and beauty of the whole. The stage is lighted solely by crystal chandeliers, without the addition of colored illumination or any of the obvious stage effects. It was Urban's intention to create a concert platform against a rich background rather than the conventional movie stage. Between the ionic columns on either side of the stage are floral panels and soft colors on a black background, similar to the decoration on the folding doors, while the grill below conceals the organ. The walls are elaborately stenciled in a small design of flowers and foliage on a dull gold surface. A striking feature of the theater is the chandelier. The basket-like arrangement of crystal strands is 12 feet in depth and 32 feet in diameter. From it is suspended the main chandelier, mounting 48 lights. Although the whole is said to be the largest chandelier in this country, the effect is surprisingly delicate and graceful. On either side of the theater, on the balcony level, are splendid old Flemish tapestries from the collection of Mr. Hurst. Flanking them are torchères of hand-carved bronze. An interesting detail is the American eagle supporting the base of each. Shields of black glass ornamented with silver tracery form wall brackets for the indirect lighting throughout the theater. In reconstructing the theater, Urban removed both balcony and gallery to make way for a single balcony, and installed a projection booth and two private boxes for the use of those interested in the theater. They are of bronze combined with black glass. Now that Yolanda is running there, the stage proper has been made over after the manner of the miracle up at the century. The charming panels are hidden behind the grim gray walls of an ancient feudal chateau, with oddly beautiful lighting to help the illusion.